The Kia Sorento first appeared on UK roads back in 2002 and it offered a utilitarian rough and ready SUV. Available with various engines and it didn't break the bank, even had a ladder frame chassis. Jump forward 18 years and it's a completely different story. The Kia Sorento fourth generation. Welcome to Planet Auto. Back in 2018, I got a chance to experience the previous generation of the Sorento. That was practical, it was versatile, and it offered a great driving experience. But the fourth generation has taken it up a whole new level. It's full of premium materials, you get different powertrains, including a hybrid and the diesel that we've got, and they've even increased the towing limit too. So it now tows two and a half tons. It's a completely new Sorento. New platform, new engines, the lot. Now there are three trims in the range to choose from. Interestingly enough, you can get a hybrid on the two, you can get the diesel on the three, and you can get a hybrid on the four as well. Prices for the range start at just over £39,000. We have the three, which is just over forty, And it's very refined to drive, isn't it, Ben? It is refined, but it's also stiffer as well, so it feels far more stable. You have a completely new terrain mode system, an economy around 40 to the gallon. Yes, Mr. Leadfoot here is getting about 25, but to you be honest, I've not been out of sport mode. <laughs> nope, you've been having fun in it. Now, if you like this video, please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you hit that notification bell, it'll let you know every time we upload some new material. Also, if you've got any questions and comments, please leave them below. Thank, Thank you. you. The Sorento has been an interesting looking vehicle from day one, but the redesigns have really ramped things up. And this fourth generation, look at it. It's got this beautiful curving bonnet, but this tiger nose grille has just taken it up to another level. And if you add in the tiger's eye line that you get with these daytime running lights, it's beautiful. It really does make a difference in terms of style. Now I mentioned the curves before, but the further down you get, the sharper the design giving it a very nice sporty look. And look, these vents go all the way into the arch, which is gonna help with cooling the brakes. And interestingly, they've shortened the overhang, making it better off-road. You've got automatic LED by projection headlights, rain sensing wipers, and you've got a host of safety as well, including lane keep assist, blind spot detection, and smart cruise control from parking sensors. As we have the three, we have the 19 inch alloy wheels, which are fitted with a mid-profile tire, giving you comfort on and off-road. With the two, you get 17 inch alloy wheels, which means it might be better suited for off-roading. And the three and the four are fitted with auto leveling suspension. Very nice. It's got cladding all the way around the wheel arch, which adds to protection, but the styling is continued around the side as well. We've got electrically operated power folding door mirror, which is heated and comes with blind spot detection, and it has the LED indicator scroll. And there's lots of chrome on here, which really gives it an executive look. The handle's two-tone and it matches the side trim, and you've got satin colored roof rails and privacy glass in the back. We've got all round disc brakes, which are vented at the front. And at the back, you can just see how big it is. It's a bit wider, it's a bit longer, and even with the fact that they've shortened the overhangs, it's a beast. The shaping around the rear window and this little fin, ooh, I love this accent. Look, we're shooting with an audience. Socially distanced, of course. The back, it's really well-defined now. It's sculpted. You've also got more of a tiger's eye stripe here. That matches the front. You've got your spoiler with your high-level brake light and very natally, the windscreen wiper is just hidden underneath, so it just pops down, but it does add to the aesthetic. You've got this very nice bumper. It's satin trim, so it's got the two-tone color matching the front. The Sorento badge just sculpts around in a curve, but it does remind you that it's all wheel drive. And the vents on the back also sculpt around, just like they do on the front. And you've got your rear parking sensors. And don't forget, with Kia, you get your seven year warranty. Let's see how easy it is to get into the new Sorento. It's got a nice raised ride height. Also keyless entry too. And look, doors that cover the sills, so no more muddy trousers either. Door opens nice and wide and big opening too. I can quite easily step in and no grab handle here, but it is nice and easy to grab here. Where do I start? Literally everything's changed, but that makes perfect sense because this is a completely new Sorento. Saying that though, you will see similarities to the earlier generation. Shapes, things like that. But overall, this is new, this has moved, smoother switch gear, 
brand new centre console, heated seats here, even the drive system too. Soft plastics throughout, premium materials. Look at that for a finish. It's just very upmarket, especially when you consider the first generation Sorento, which was such a utilitarian vehicle. This is seriously heading into the luxury market, it really is. You will find hard plastics, but you do have to dig around to find them. As for build quality, I'm literally rocking the car. Comfortable, luxurious and full of tech. Well done, Kia. I've got all round electric windows. I can also control my mirrors from this door card too. There's a little panel down here and I can adjust my headlamp height. There's also a button here for the smart tailgate and I can disable my traction control. On this right stalk, this is where you control your rain sensing wipers. And the left stalk, this is where your auto lights are. You've also got high beam assist as well. Steering wheel wise, beautiful. Leather wrapped, stitched, and believe it or not, the perfect size for a seven seater SUV. If you're in a sporty mood, you've also got paddles on the back of the steering wheel too. Now, unlike any other Kia we've ever had, this has smart cruise control and it is a doddle to use, it really is. I'll go deeper into that in the driving section. Above that, you can cycle through your cluster and on the left-hand side, you've got your telephony and your media controls. When it comes to the cluster, it's so different to the previous one. For a start, it's a full LED screen. Speed on the right, rev counter on the left. It's also got a center area where you can see things like the distance from the car in front, media, and all types of other things too. Moving to the infotainment screen. Well, this is the uprated one because we've got the three. On the three and four, you get a 10.25 inch screen, I think it is. It's got Apple CarPlay, it's got Android Auto, it's got navigation, and it's got DAB as well. You can also set some of the car's settings. And of course, it doubles as a 180 reversing camera as well. It's very clear, it's easy to use, and it operates quickly too. Now that's not what you expected. That's for switch gear. Most of this is pretty much touch sensitive. We've also got a digital display here. You'll also notice it's dual zone climate control too. And here's some other shortcut buttons. Under this smooth action door, we've got charging points. And to the left and right, I do like the location of these. And these are for your heated seats. And I almost forgot, on the three and four, you can also get a wireless charging pad here too. The shift is an interesting one. Rotary dial, reverse neutral drive, and if you press the center, park. This is a rather clever idea. It's a dual action button. It's also rotary too. So if you turn it either left or right, you'll engage comfort, eco, sport, or smart. If you press it in, you'll then engage terrain mode, and you can choose from snow, mud, or sand. Behind that, you can disable your start stop. You can operate your camera. You can also disable your parking sensors, perfect for when you're off-roading. You've got a heated steering wheel button here and auto hold for your handbrake. And not forgetting descent control. You've also got a start engine stop button here and an auto dimming mirror and some shortcut buttons. I've got decent headroom. I'm six foot three and also I've got decent legroom too. It's a very comfortable driving position, reach and rake adjustment in the steering wheel and it's a lovely armrest as well, and it's wide enough for you and your passenger. I've got a footrest on the left hand side here. When it comes to the seat, well, it's electrically adjusted and it's eight way as well, so you can really make it your own. On the right hand side, the door card's finished very nicely. It's got a lovely padded area for your arm. There's also electric lumbar support here too. I've got a decent door pocket. Under this door, I've also got a storage point too. Two cup holders with grippers, story handage pot here, and a perfect place for your phone too. And if I lift up the armrest, oddments tray, rather large one, and a pretty cavernous storage point too. I think I'd get my lunch in there. Glove box, decent size. Let's see how easy it is to get into the rear. Nice ride height. Also, the doors open nice and wide too. Nice wide opening, but that makes perfect sense because this is also how you access the third row. Ah. Welcome to my limousine. What else can I say though? <laughs> Blinds, heated seats, cup holder at this height. Perfect position, really is. And everything's so well finished too. 
We've even got things like USBs here. And if the front passenger's been too greedy, well, bye. Comfortable seats, decent headroom at six foot three, and colossal legroom as well. I can get my feet under the front seats too. Map pockets on the back of the seats. They're also recessed as well, not that you need it. I mean, granted this is set up as a five seater, but it is ridiculously spacious, it really is. And if I do need to give my rear passengers some more room, I can just literally pull up this bar. I can bring my seat forward or back. This is perfect for two people on, say, a business journey. I mean, five people will essentially travel in this quite comfortably. But if it's two, and you've got two cup holders here as well. So there's four cup holders in the back. It's nice, light and airy. Yes, it has privacy glass because it's such a big vehicle. It just feels spacious. I've got a lovely padded armrest on here. This mixture of finishes really lightens up these black door cards. It's very, very well done. It really is. There's a small door pocket down here as well. Electric window, as I mentioned, the heated seat. You've got some vents and 12 volt socket and another USB as well. One thing I've noticed is this cup holder's actually got grippers on it as well. Curtain side airbags as well. And I suppose it's about time I tried to get into the third row. Wish me luck. Actually doable. Okay, so. Save there. And once you're inside here, ample headroom, nice storage tray, cup holder here. I've even got my own vent and I can turn off the air conditioning in the back too. There's also a nice USB charger for my phone. Now, back here, you'd think it might be a bit claustrophobic, but because you've got this window, it's not. The clever thing about the Sorento is there's so many configurations for the seats. So is it possible for me to get into the back? Well, yes. Might be a bit of a squeeze through the seats, but if you can bounce through, you're actually fine. And when you get in there, ample room. If you wanted more storage in the back to drop this seat, you just literally pull this. And then that locks in place. Opening the Kia Sorento is nice and easy. You've got a button on the dash. You've also got a button on the key fob for your smart tailgate. Hold it down and it releases. Once open, you've got a decent space. As we've got seven seats, We've got the two, which are the third row, remaining flat. There's also a very minimal bootlet too. Under here, you've got all your tools and extra storage point as well. But handy. And yes, you are right. You haven't seen an inflation kit or a spare wheel. The spare wheel is stored under here. Shopping bag hooks, tethering points. And if we drop the second row of seats, well, literally, you get things like wardrobes in here, you really would. There is a bit of a gap here, not colossal, and they don't lay entirely flat, but they're pretty close to it. Now, I showed you the dial before for the fans, and I was just thinking that would double if you want to keep your doggy nice and chilled. Saying that, you can get lots of accessories as well. Gates, tow bars, you name it. 12 volt socket here, and just so you don't have to go around to that door, you can drop the seats using these. There's two handy positions for the parcel shelf. You can also stow it here. Welcome aboard the new Kia Sorento. Under the bonnet, we've got a two litre turbocharged diesel engine, which is four cylinder. It's also coupled to an eight speed DCT automatic gearbox. We've got around 200 horsepower. And yes, this can tow. Saying that it's been increased to two and a half ton. And you've got 370 newton meters of torque. New platform. The new SmartStream engine is in this Sorento, meaning it's got an aluminium block, not iron, making it 30 kilos lighter. And on the three and the four, you can get auto leveling suspension. Well, now we're talking about suspension. Why don't we talk about the handling? It's not what you expect for a seven seater SUV. When we open it up on a country road, it's far more agile than you give it credit for. Yes, you're gonna get body roll, because let's face it, it's a big old beast. But there's less than you'd expect. And even when we took it mildly off-roading yesterday, it felt very well planted. Yeah. It was comfortable. And you can tell that they've refined the cabin because the noise was less. There was little vibration in the cabin. And it all just came together for a very nice riding and driving experience, didn't it? Yeah, well, that's it. Because what you expect, diesel engines are just 
They're noisy, aren't they? Yeah, but you really can't tell because of how well they've refined it. So even then when you punch it, it's not that loud in the cabin. No, well that's it, it's only loud under heavy load, but that's what you expect in a diesel engine. Because they are brilliant at towing, aren't they? They've oh, got yeah. fantastic capabilities in all areas. Well, see, it handles so well, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's very smooth around corners. Now, as it's a diesel, you're going to want to know about the fuel economy. Key will say that you can get up to 42. Now, this is Ben driving, so what are you getting? I'm currently getting 24.5. That's really good for you. I was going to say, considering I'm in sport like 90% of the time. If we put it in smart, I'm sure we'll easily, by the end of this journey, be up to closer to 30. Comfort is a really nice mode if you're just wanting to poodle all and it just to be a nice, comfortable journey. Well, that brings you to driving mode. You've also got smart mode as well, haven't you? And yes. eco. You've got all-wheel drive and you've got new terrain modes on this. You've got mud, sand and snow. You yeah. have. And we really found it quite helpful on the beach yesterday, didn't we? Well, that's it. We did get stuck in two-wheel drive, but when we popped it into four-wheel drive, no it made problem. all the difference, yeah. You really feel the suspension, can't you? It's such a comfortable ride. The other thing I've noticed is, even with 19s on, you don't even feel potholes. No, that mid-profile tyre really does add to the comfort, doesn't it? It does. The one thing you can tell is that there's a bit of tyre noise, but it that's depends the other on the thing road, with bigger though. wheels. Yeah. And, yeah, a dodgier road. You've got a great driving position, it's comfortable, and an, even though it's a seven-seater, it's less wobbly than you would imagine. Steering-wise, well, you think with a big SUV, it wouldn't be that precise. Um, you'd be completely wrong, because it is. Which isn't always what you expect from a big SUV. Gives you good feedback. It's rather engaging too, nice and light when you need it to be, but on a back road it does get quite heavy. Check that for acceleration. We've just joined dual carriageway and child's play up to speed very nicely and lots of power to exceed the speed limit if you get in trouble, so always a good thing to know. On the other end of the scale just plod along in an A road in smart mode and it'll try and get into top gear as fast as possible. It makes it a rather economical and pleasant drive, doesn't it? It's a great cruising vehicle. It can be versatile for any number of adventures. Whee! Now it handles so smoothly, doesn't it? Well, that's it. It's, it's, it is very agile. Gearbox is very responsive. Kick down and uh, go sailing up this hill with absolutely no problems. Very smooth changes as well. I have noticed that if you have your start-stop activated it can be a little hesitant from lights. You kind of expect that. But, but you, can, also, you can disable that though can't you? You can disable it and it's also handy when you're in a city environment isn't it? So you get the best of both. Exactly. Cruising along at 70 miles an hour very little noise in the cabin, apart from a rumble from the tyres, but as we mentioned before, that's down to the actual road surface. On new roads, it's remarkable how quiet a diesel engine could be, to be honest, but this is the new smart stream engine, isn't it? Well, that's it. When you think about the, ref the refinements, the technology advances, the differences between this one and the first generation, it's leaps and bounds ahead, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's now a premium SUV rather than a utilitarian vehicle. A, a, yeah, towing tank, shall we say. <laughs> towing tank, that's plumbing perfect. You've got lots of safety on here as well, haven't you? Oh, there's chock full. You've got blind spot detection, you've got the intelligent smart meter on your cruise control, you've got cross traffic alert, lane keep assist. Just from the cluster I can see that we've got road sign recognition as well. And we've got multi-collision brake assist, which is because you can tow with this, you've got trailer sway assist as well. well that's always needed. Yes. We've also got smart cruise control on this model as well. It looks like it also self-steers. Let's find out. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show what the self steering's like. Keep hands on steering wheel. Good advice. You can feel the lane keep assist there. And it's now trapped the car in front. And okay, the steering was a little less to be desired there, courtesy of the sharp bend. So it assists steering, 
but it won't steer you down a set of hairpins. The white lines are so faded around here, but it was still managing it for say 90%, which is very good. My word, strong braking, very nice. And as soon as the car moves away, back up to speed rather quickly. So it should. Bit of an eager beaver. <laughs> yeah. Fogs. Fogs. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the first time we've actually experienced adaptive cruise control in a Kia. And it's a great system, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's very good. If and it's, it's like a watchful eye, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, economy's going up as well, 25.8. But it's actually hovering closer to 50. There doesn't seem to be any lag in the time of it either, and this is just seamless. Yeah, it slows down quickly, but it also gets back up to speed fast too. As you saw then, it pulled up behind a parked vehicle, alerted us, and then allowed me to pull out, whilst giving me good space too. It'll also do the same in traffic as well, so if you pull up behind a car, it's a set of lights, it'll wait until the car moves away and then pull away. It's nice and easy to select as well. I literally press mode. Lights are very good, you've got LEDs front and back. And the high beam has quite a throw too. They've increased the brakes. <laughs> That's probably what made them stronger than the last model. Yes. The thing is it's lighter and if they've made a stronger brakes as well, it'll even be better than it was and it wasn't bad last time. Economy update, 27.6. Wow. Quite happy with that, to be honest. Quite easily do 30. Well, the thing about the Sorento, and I think you'll agree with this, Annabelle, is you can just get in it and drive it so easily, and it's got so many additions to make driving a pleasure. And it's like you've got Overwatch too. <laughs> yeah, they have seemed to have thought of everything yeah. that you could possibly need or want yeah. in a seven-seater SUV. The Kia Sorento offers versatility, practicality and Canto too. It's NCAT 5, Euro 6D and gives you relatively good economy. A seven-seater with top-notch safety, it's stylish at an affordable price. And don't forget that seven-year warranty.